Hi, this is Seth David from the world famous Nerd Enterprises Incorporated, bringing to you another screencast from the Ask Nerd Forum on Nerd's blog. Just go to nerdenterprises.com forward slash blog and click at the top where it says Ask Nerd. And you can fill out that form and send your questions in. And if I can, I can't do all of them, but I can do a lot of them. So to the extent that I can, I will pick certain ones out and do a free screencast on those. So on this one, Howard writes in, we're a manufacturer of custom lighting products that take many weeks to build. We do require deposit from our customers. Do you have an easy way of recording advanced deposits from customers into a deposit liability account to be applied when we ship our goods? The answer is yes, I do. And I'm going to show you that in this screencast. The next part, he says, we need to know how to send pro forma invoices by using either the sales order or estimates windows However, we are being told we need to recognize the sale via progress invoicing at time of deposit, which recognizes the sales in the wrong period. We also need an easy way of issuing the balance due invoicing before we ship. Now, that's a little more than I can cover in a short screencast for free. However, Howard, if you're watching this, feel free to call me at 866-945-8070, and I'm going to email you this, too. I can schedule a private training with you, one-on-one. -on -one. You can share your screen with me. I can have you show me your books, and I can coach you through how to do everything in your actual set of books, so you have the real-life application, not just the theory. The uh, second thing I'm going to do is come up with a generic full-length screencast in my Knowledge Center, which anybody can go and download, covering exactly how to set this all up. You need the contractor's edition of QuickBooks, and there's a few little settings in there that you have to set. One is to let uh, uh, QuickBooks know you're going to be doing progress billing. It's in the preferences. And the other one is a little tweak on a, an item setup, which lets QuickBooks know for something that's not an inventory part, for example, that uh, an item is going to be used as, as, um, as, a, as, as a special, it's a special kind of designation on a, on a service item that you can set that says it's either going to be billed out to a subcontractor or used in an inventory assembly item. And so you'll see that option in your item setup. So if that gives you enough information to work it out on your own, great, that's what I'm here for. If not, I'm available for one-on-one -on -one private training. Just call me at 866-945-8070 and I will be happy to fill your life with wonderful QuickBooks knowledge on any given day, at any given time. Just give me a call or email me, Seth at NerdEnterprises.com. Don't go away yet. Stay tuned for the free screencast where we're going to go over the first part of Frank's question, which is how to handle the customer deposit in a case like this. Hi, this is Seth David from the world famous Nerd Enterprises Incorporated, and today we're bringing you a webcast on how to handle customer deposits in QuickBooks. This is the short version. I've put up a full length version already in my Knowledge Center, which is about 36 minutes of video going into very great detail in terms of what you're about to see here in very short detail about how to set this up. The full length version covers uh, the whole thing from setup to understanding how it flows around the balance sheet and so on and so forth. For this purpose, I just want to give you enough that most of you can probably take this and, and run off with it without having to pay for the full length version. But by all means, if you want the full length version, it's $25 in my learning center as of right now. That doesn't mean I won't change the price later. So get it now if you want it. Now, when we receive a deposit from a customer, the temptation, especially to someone, frankly, who's inexperienced at bookkeeping, might be to think that it's income. The reality is we know better, most of us hopefully, that it's not income. It, in, it is, in fact, a liability. When I receive money from somebody and I haven't earned it, it's a liability because I either have to earn it, which means I have to perform. I have to provide a service or I have to provide them with a product that's equal in value to what they've given me. Or I have to return the money at some point. So it is a liability, which means what we want to do is one of two things. The easy, quick, and dirty way is to go to customers and go to receive payments and where is receive payments? There it is. We go to receive payments. And QuickBooks tries to sell me something. And we're going to receive a payment for iCustomer, which I'm going to add very quickly here, for $2,000 and save it. What that does, of course, if I run a receivables report, and we'll just run a simple receivables report like open invoices. 
is it puts a negative amount on my accounts receivable. Now the benefit of this is when I go to invoice the customer for something, that amount will show up. And it will be immediately available to be applied as a credit as soon as QuickBooks recognizes that I'm invoicing iCustomer. So we can come down here and set up an item for a lighting products. And I'm just going to make this up very quickly now for this purpose. Associate it with sales. And I meant to really set that up as a, an inventory part, but it really doesn't matter for this purpose. So let's say the invoice is for $5,000. And notice here I can now apply the credits. Notice here to the right also it shows me I've got an open balance of negative $2,000. So I can click yes. And then it brings up the dialog in which I can apply the credit to the invoice. Very easy. But like I said, the problem with that is it's, it's, it's a little dirty because it shows negative numbers in my accounts receivable. The full-length tutorial goes into much greater detail about when and where that can potentially be a real problem. So let's say, and, and the other thing is, you can't invoice the customer for the deposit this way. You're simply receiving the money and applying it. So notice now the accounts receivable is 3000 because they prepaid us 2000 or put a deposit of 2000 We billed them 5 applied the 2 now they owe us 3 so let's say that we want to be able to actually invoice them for the deposit. So let me go back in and delete these transactions and then we'll do it over again. So we'll delete this. And let's delete the payment. Because the reason we want to be able to invoice the customer for the deposit is one tracking, so that if if we're, our expectations are going to pay a deposit, we've we've got a record of the fact that they need to send that money in. And second, it's nice it's a nice thing to provide the client with when we're able to invoice them for a deposit. The tricky part then is how to apply that to the invoice later on when you've actually billed them for the service. So we need to go to our item list. We need to create a new item. Let me just get rid of these pop-ups that QuickBooks loves to give me and we're gonna call this one a deposit and this is gonna to go to an account called customer deposits which we have to create so we're gonna set it up and remember a deposit when we receive it from a customer is a liability a negative receivable is a liability remember when we just did it as as though we were receiving a payment from the customer Direct, you know, when we just did it a second ago, it showed up as a negative receivable. So this has to be an other current liability. And the reason it's current is we expect that we're going to have to either perform or refund the money within a year. So now we have our deposit item set up on the books, which means I can invoice just for that. We'll invoice I customer down here for the item code deposit $2,000 save and close. Now we're going to get the money, customer, receive payments. And before I do this, look at the balance sheet real quick. This is a great way to learn how the accounting flows. I've got my receivables of $2,000. I've got my customer deposits of $2,000. Now let's go get the money. So they pay me $2,000, which goes to an invoice. But again, no income has been recognized yet. If I run a profit and loss, there's no income on the books. I run it for all dates just so you, you know there's nothing up my sleeve here. So the last thing we need to do is we need to then transfer. Well first let's invoice the customer for the actual product or service. Let's try that again. Invoice I customer. Go down to the item code for lighting. Notice now, though, there's no open balance and there's nothing to, uh, there's no credits to apply to this invoice. So we have to go get the credits, basically. And the way we're going to do that here is by recording a journal entry. So we're going to go to company and we're going to make a general journal entry. 
Now in the full length video I go into a little bit more detail in terms of explaining how this works and why. I don't have time for that in this short video. But the customer deposit is a liability. We want to get rid of that. And we want to get rid of the accounts receivable. And we, of course, have to use that customer's name here. And then we always put a memo. Apply deposit to invoice. Or to accounts receivable is more accurate because the actual act of applying the payment to the invoice has to be done separately. So now that I've done that, I do have an open balance here of negative two thousand dollars so that updates I click apply credits I have to save the invoice first of course and now my credits there to be applied done and then I'll show you one more quick thing on this which again the full length video goes into much greater detail about this so we have two thousand dollars in undeposited funds that we received from the customer of course we would have to record that in the bank I had not created a bank account on the books yet so let's call it iBank Save it. Brings up our payments to deposit. OK. Save and close. Done. So now I've got receivables of 3000 I got my deposit in the bank of 2000 And I'm ready to send the invoice out because now if I show the invoice and I send it out to my customer, you can see that it will show that I have payments applied of $2,000 quickly look here focus your attention down here at the bottom it's got the payments applied now of two thousand so dollars it's nice and clean when you do it this way so let us do one last quick thing which is run a report I want you to see what this looks like when you do it right we're gonna filter it for the customer deposits account and I'm going to total it by customer and down here I've got my columns set up the way they should be. Notice what happens now when I run a, a report on that account, on the deposits account. It shows that I received the deposit here, and my journal entry zeroes out. So now I know I customers of deposits have been fully applied. The full length video goes over this in much greater detail. The link to download that video will be posted wherever this video is posted. So just go ahead and click on it, download the video. Like I said, at the time I'm posting this initially, it's $25. That will be subject to change at any time if I should decide that I think it's worth more or less. So, uh, but go ahead and download it now, and you can get it today for uh, $25 the day this video is posting up, which will be at some point during the week following December 18, 2010. I hope you have an absolutely fantastic day, and I look forward to seeing you on the web.